Hello, I'm here today with Dr. Lorraine Mehta, and um, she is one of the new cutting edge doctors who started out in traditional medicine and has made her way over into, would you say, Dr. Mehta, integrative, uh, alternative? What, what's the term you like to use? I usually use the term functional medicine because that's where I have my board certification, but I also practice in integrative medicine as well. So for those, the sake of those people who are watching, what she means by integrative medicine is the best of both. When you need um, a, a, a pharmaceutical, um, they're a godsend. But uh, would you say, Dr. Mehta, and by the way, I just didn't even say hello because we had been talking before we started. So I feel like I already know you. I feel like I know you too. <laughs> would you say that um, uh, you like to go uh, functional first and then resort to allopathic as a last resort? Absolutely, and that's why people come to me. They wouldn't come to me first if they hadn't tried all the allopathic and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. That's why but, I specialize in this. Uh, what, what made you want to go in this direction? There were so many different turning points in my life, but when I worked in the emergency room, in Midtown Manhattan, and I saw the same people coming back over and over again. I said, something is not working with this mm -hmm. system. Then I was a doctor in the New York Stock Exchange, and there was a high stress time. Uh, these people had, they had money, they had good insurance, and yet, you know, you give them the best advice, the best of care, and they still came back again. And I made it a point to teach prevention. I went into a corporation, and we gave them, you know, wellness programs and then I was cutting edge. We actually in the 80s introduced yoga, massage, meditation. It was unheard of then. And then I started introducing functional medicine into the picture and then that's when I started to see results because it just didn't matter how much money you had, what kind of insurance you had, what kind of doctors. We had the access to the best doctors in New York City, but it didn't matter. It was lifestyle, it was prevention, it was so many different factors that helped people get healthy. I have a, a friend I'm thinking of in particular, wealthy man, can afford the best doctors. He always brags, I have a different doctor for every part of my body. <laughs> I, and I always say, the problem is none of them are talking to one another. Right. And your drugs are all kind of colliding with one another. <laughs> And I see him, he's the same age as my husband. I see the difference between the two of them, between um, going all allopathic or going, um, we call it alternative or functional, whatever you see. Is the main reason that people come to you now is the first reason hormone imbalance? Or do they even know they have hormone imbalance? It's a little mixture of both because people still don't understand what functional medicine is. They'll come to me saying, I don't know what's wrong. I go to the doctor. They tell me I'm getting old or they'll tell me I'm stressed. They just want to give me medication. I don't feel like myself anymore. Some actually know because actually they go to your site and they say, oh, I read her book and uh, I know I have a hormone imbalance. Many people know it and they because they've read but most people have no idea and they, they just say, I don't feel right. Nothing my doctor's telling me is working. The, we're in the greatest environmental assault in the history of humanity right now. We've got chemicals on our food, we're spraying chemicals on our lawn, we're cleaning our house with chemicals, our mattresses are made of chemicals. Is it possible to balance hormones um, without detoxing your body and changing your lifestyle it, relative to the environment to some degree? It's possible, but not the best solution. Mm -hmm. I actually detox people before I put them on hormones because they work better. You know, there's so many, all of these chemicals are hormone disruptors and they've, they've really wreaked havoc with our lives and our health. And people don't even, while I'm measuring their hormones, I give them a detox and they come back feeling 80% better just with the detox before I even gave them the hormones. And when that teaches them how to live. When you say detox, what would that entail? Generally, I do an elimination diet and I use some detoxifying herbs and detoxifying shakes that, that actually pull out chemicals and metals because it's all stored in our fat and our bone marrow. And I have them eliminate the 10 most troublesome foods. Most of them were genetically modified to take in so much of that 
chemical glycosphate, otherwise known as Roundup, it gets incorporated into the plant and you're eating it and you're eating a lot of it. It's a hormone disruptor. It's a, it's a immune system disruptor. So I have them eat organic, organic foods, wild caught fish, uh, free range organic meats. I have them eliminate alcohol just for two weeks. <laughs> I try to make it fast. <laughs> it's just two weeks. You can do it for two weeks. <laughs> Everybody says, what am I going to eat? So eliminate alcohol, artificial sweeteners, caffeine, corn, dairy, eggs, peanuts, sugar, soy, wheat, and anything with gluten. First week, you know, maybe a few days they might have a headache and be irritable, but almost everybody comes back. They lost weight. They're mentally clear. They feel energetic. They're sleeping better. Their aches and pains went away. This is all toxins and food sensitivities, which are caused by the toxins. So even before I start hormones, they're better. I, I, it's interesting that you say that about offending foods. Um, recently, my husband was in the hospital for five days. So I, I stayed with them and I could only get what they had. And I don't generally eat many eggs, but in the morning, that's all they had. So I ate scrambled eggs every morning. Mm -hmm. No bread, no potatoes, no. I ate eggs every morning for five days. I gained five pounds from the eggs, not because eggs are fattening, but because they weren't organic eggs. Right. And um, my body went, what are you doing to me? So yeah. what you're saying, I agree with 100% that um, uh, it's about the food and people now need to truly understand the effects of food on their health and their system. I think um, stressing preventative medicine as you do is the greatest gift that you could give to people because most people wait till they're there, till they've yeah. got the disease or the condition. So how, how do you make them understand how important it is to start today? It's education. Mm -hmm. When they first come to me, they, they know something is not right and they, they're a little bit more motivated because either something happened to somebody else or they're feeling the changes. They say, I don't want to age like my parents. I don't want to end up with the heart attack like my parents had. I don't fit into my clothes. I don't look good. I don't feel good about myself. So I, I educate them that sometimes even small changes can make a big difference. I also show them their lab work. I mean, I'll, I'll do nutritional analysis. I'll look for inflammatory markers. Inflammation is the root cause of almost all chronic illness. And if you see that the markers in the blood are high, that might motivate them. Some people need uh, some hard data. And I have many different things that I can do. Other people want education. So I give them things to read. Um, I have a discussion with them. I put all the pieces together because there, there is so much disparate data and information, but when you put it all together and you show them that their high cortisol from their stress raises their blood sugar, raises their lipids, and then all of that makes them fat, and then the fat has more toxins in it, and then that disrupts their hormones, then they get it. It's a sequence. I guess the first indicator that all is not well is when you uh, sleep five hours or less, right? Oh, that's huge. And uh, especially for weight loss, people don't realize how important it is to sleep. Well, I, I, you know, in writing the books that I write, uh, understanding high cortisol means all the major hormones are high. Insulin, adrenal, cortisol. What's the other one? Oh, the um, endocrine. Is that, is that, Yeah. You're the doctor. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly uh, insulin and cortisol, and then the inflammatory markers go up. Right. So if your cortisol is high, your stress hormone, you can't sleep. If your cortisol is high, then your insulin goes high. And that's where the weight gain is coming from. And, and that, I'm thinking of one woman in particular who wrote me. She said, I don't eat anymore. I'm allergic to everything. No. I don't eat anything because everything I eat makes me fat. I'm gaining weight. I just keep gaining weight without eating. So is that all about cortisol? Is cortisol where you start with a person like that? I, well, I'll start. I always start with the detox because people yeah, feel go. better with the detox. Mm -hmm. While they're detoxing, just before they start the detox, I do a cortisol test and saliva. Because when people see that graph, because it, they do four points. 
So it starts in the morning, they do one in, in the afternoon, they do one between three and five and one before going to bed. If the one before going to bed goes up, that's the one that's gonna disrupt their sleep the most. Or if they wake up with a cortisol that's sky high, you know it started getting high in the middle of the night. It's those 4 a.m., three, 4 a.m. wakenings that are cortisol. So I can give them some supplements. I teach them deep belly breathing. I'll give them some adaptogenic herbs and some uh, vitamins, maybe phosphatidylserine to lower cortisol. I start there, but I also clean the gut first. That whole detox, so it, it balances the immune system, detoxify the liver. It's diagnostic for food sensitivities and people heal. And this affects everybody. And for, for those of you who are watching, listen to what Dr. Maida is saying, that um, y you, don't, you don't get balanced back by just fixing the cortisol. It's, it's, a, it's a major approach to, uh, as she just said, uh, the gut balance. If you're eating food that's been genetically modified or sprayed with pesticides, you're going to have gut imbalance. Gut imbalance leads to leaky gut, um, uh, which affects the organs and glands. I mean, it's a whole concert that is the human body. What's exciting about a doctor like you is finally an understanding of the whole system rather than a specialization. Um, so you do, you do uh, detoxification, you balance hormones, what else could someone expect who comes to your prevention, who comes to your uh, office to, um, to expect to uh, work on to get to optimal health? Because that's the goal, isn't it? Optimal Absolutely. health? Absolutely. Well, the basics, you know, good nutrition. I look for nutritional deficiencies. Men turn testosterone into estrogen if they're deficient in zinc. If they're, oh. if they're yeah. And if I've they're never heard that. Oh yes, absolutely. You know, there are a lot of there are a lot of estrogens in the environment, or things that act like estrogen. So mm -hmm. you're seeing premature puberty in women, and mm -hmm. you're seeing men with breasts and big bellies. Mm -hmm. What's happening there is the fat in their belly is is activating an enzyme called aromatase, which turns testosterone into estrogen. I see this all the time, and that has to do with nutritional deficiencies, maybe too much alcohol weight, inflammation. So we, I try to decrease inflammation, get their nutrients in order, and then they can make their own testosterone. The testosterone doesn't go down a sinkhole. They feel better. Yeah, for sure. My husband's always worried that my estrogen cream is going to rub off on him. Is that possible? It's possible. That's why I tell people do it, you know, in the morning when you, and when you're going to put clothes on over it and after an hour or so it's, it's all absorbed. So it absorbs within 40 to 60 minutes. What, what's the best place to apply uh, estrogen cream on the body? I usually have them apply it in the thinner areas because estrogen likes to stay in the fat. So I don't put it on fatty areas because it'll end up staying in the fat. I usually put it on the inner arms, inner thighs, maybe upper chest, mm -hmm. uh, sides of the body, because uh, those are usually covered by clothing. And um, I tell them not, not on your face, not on your butt, not on your breasts. Okay. Do you um, uh, cycle in that estrogen every day and progesterone 15 days of the month, or do you do continuous combined? It, it depends. So if a person is cycling, I do it 15 days a month. Well, Generally, I don't give estrogen to a cycling woman because mm -hmm. they make too much estrogen. That's your book. I'm too young for this. Right. <laughs> so that are so estrogen dominant, I give them progesterone. Uh, and menopausal women, I like to make it simple for them because they, you know, if they're if they're not sure if they're getting their cycles, I'll do it days one through 25 of the month and give them a chance to shed their uterine lining. If they're clearly menopausal, they haven't had a period in over a year. I get, I give them a hormone six days a week. Give them one hormone free day, give their liver a break, give their brain a, a break because the brain likes the hormones to be fluctuating and not just constant all the time. So, and then I have to adapt it to an individual's tolerance and need, but that's generally the way I do it. I find that women uh, who are completely drained out don't have a lot of patience 
in the beginning with hormone replacement because it's alchemy, right? You gotta, you gotta keep yes. tweaking. So what do you, what do you say to them? Because I, I know so many women who say, oh, I tried it, it doesn't work for me. And I think I didn't hang up in there long enough. Well, there's a lot of, you know, I try to encourage them. They go on my website and look at the testimonials of other people. A lot of people come because they were referred by somebody else. I might start them at a higher dose. I might put them on an estrogen patch because mm -hmm. it, it tends to absorb quicker. And then I start to, I might wean them down later. But I have to tell you, when they detox first, they handle it better. It's just easier. Yeah. Easier that makes, that makes such sense. I, can, I you know, I keep thinking of the of letters I get from people and what the complaints are. And you're right. Usually it's somebody who's got a high toxic burden that's not handling the hormones well. Yeah. And they have to move their bowels. Right. You know, so many people come in. I can't believe that they don't move their bowels for three to five days. If I go a day without my bowels, right. I'm miserable. Yeah, me too. You get what rid of the excess hormones, the excess cortisol, the excess estrogen. It's awful if you can't do that. I just make sure all the different systems are working. I get great results with people with uh, gastrointestinal problems. The, and I, 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 I can't think of anybody I know who doesn't have some sort of gut issue today. And I'm sure it's from the environmental um, exposures that we're talking about. But what is this epidemic of irritable bowel syndrome about? Some, a lot of that has to do with stress. It's also environmental. There's no clear answer about what irritable bowel is about, but I know most people are not getting enough fiber. They're not, they're only 25% of the population gets enough magnesium. They're deficient in minerals. Look, the soil has 70% less nutrients than it did 20 years ago. The food isn't picked right, so it didn't reach its full potential. It loses in shipping, in in storage, in cooking, and you don't absorb it all. So people are really nutrient deficient, and especially in magnesium and fiber. So my magic for getting people to, you know, move, so to speak, is to, you know, give some magnesium, some fiber, and some probiotics, and it totally changes their lives. When you say magnesium, do you mean magnesium citrate? Yes. Yes. Because um, there, there are different kinds of magnesium, but for the sake of the viewer, magnesium citrate is, um, it, it makes you go. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and for those who go too much, maybe if you need magnesium, I use magnesium glycinate. And when I was doing dance, Dancing with the Stars last year, which, uh, uh, that's a long story. <laughs> uh, and I was so sore at the end of every day of using parts of my body I'd never used. I took Epsom salt baths. Aren't they wonderful? It is the cheapest miracle that exists out there. Can you explain to the viewer why an Epsom salt bath can be so um, relieving? Well, magnesium is very relaxing. It relaxes smooth muscle. It's used for 300 different enzymatic reactions in the body. It can be absorbed through the bath. The warmth brings circulation to the area. The magnesium gets in and it restores the muscle. Yeah. Yeah, and you will have the greatest sleep of your life when you take yes. a magnesium. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's the reason our grandparents always did it and talked about it. They knew something back then, didn't they, Lorraine? They did. You know, my, my grandma used olive oil for every rash, every earache, and magnesium Epsom salt baths. Yeah. They did know something. They did. The new, the new um, uh, thing that people are uh, talking a, a, about a lot in our world is uh, the benefits of uh, virgin organic coconut oil. Do you have any thoughts on that? You know, the research on that, uh, it's mixed. Mm -hmm. I think it's good, but too much of anything is no good. I, I now I have people throwing coconut oil and butter and coffee. Coffee by itself is a wonderful antioxidant mm -hmm. until you put something in it, then it destroys the antioxidant value. There's some mixed data about coconut oil. I mean, it is antibacterial uh, in small amounts. It can help you lose weight. It's a good medium chain triglyceride that feeds the brain. But again, too much of a good thing. You're throwing off balance. Yeah. I had never uh, heard about um, uh, ruining the, the detox. I'm not the, um, 
the the uh, the effects of coffee, antioxidant effects of coffee if you put something in it. Yeah. I happen to like black coffee. And it actually is the secret to my happy marriage in that my husband makes the greatest coffee and brings it to me in bed every morning. It's a ritual. Oh, that's what my husband does for <laughs> me, too. <laughs> I think that's the, the basis of a happy marriage. He is. He brings me coffee. I gave up coffee for a while, and then he bought this wonderful coffee machine and got me. I only, I'll only drink really good coffee, yeah. and he brings it to me in bed every morning with a kiss. I love it. It's uh, Me, too. It's a, What a nice way to start the day. Yes. So you are in uh, Summit, New Jersey. And um, is it a, a clinic, your office? Tell me about your, your it's business. Office. It's actually, a lot of people like coming here. I have two offices, one in Basking Ridge and one in Summit. This is one in Summit. Both of them are integrative health centers mm -hmm. where I have different practitioners here at different times. Uh, and I'm right by, everybody likes coming to Summit because I'm right by the Short Hills Mall, which is a big Shishi mall. They go to the street and they go shopping <laughs> well, <laughs> from all them, over the country. Get them looking so good, they want to go buy new clothes. If, yeah. if one lived in Manhattan, would Summit, New Jersey be in the realm of possibility? I don't know the geography back there. Yes, easy. They, I get a lot of people from Manhattan. In fact, Summit is a big commuter town into Manhattan. Because I have found Manhattan to be um, essentially void of your kind of doctoring. Really? Yes, yeah. There are very, very few. So people who write me from New York always want to know who to go to in Manhattan. I've got about three where I can refer, but I'm glad to know that um, your, your uh, work very is- Very easy. I, people commute every day to summit. Oh, great. Great. Now, I see um, in areas of your specialization, metabolism, and you were talking about uh, GI tract issues. I'd like to just spend a little time on that because all I ever hear are complaints about people's gut, um, bloating, cramping, discomfort. Uh, is that Does that start with detox also? Yes, because once you a lot of people get the bloating and cramps from food intolerances or food sensitivities. Either they lack the enzyme or they're sensitive to the protein in the food. I, I find even after eliminating the food and then in reintroducing them in their pure form one at a time, then their body will tell them what's giving them the gas and the bloating. And, and, how, and how much of an effect are antibiotics on gut health? It's awful for gut health. So if anybody has to be on an antibiotic, sometimes you know it's necessary. Mm -hmm. Make sure they take probiotics with it, and then in addition to their regular probiotic, Saccharomyces boulardii, because it, it's the only one that's not destroyed by an antibiotic. And yeah, you it's you can change it com your gut health completely by wiping out the good stuff with antibiotics. The late, great uh, Dr. Nick Gonzalez, I don't know if you're aware of him. He, oh, yes. he always, uh, an incredible person. He always talked about Saccharides boulardii in the same way that you are. Um, so I don't think most people realize that anti takes away, but pro puts back. So that if you are on an antibiotic, that a probiotic is crucial. Yes, and then if you eat properly, you, the good stuff will grow and the bad stuff won't. Right. So, again. Right. And, to, and, and tell, tell the viewers um, why organic food. Because the herbicides and pesticides are all hormone disruptors. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they disrupt your thyroid. I, I just did a, an interview with somebody about everything that makes you fat. I mean, it causes inflammation. It makes you fat. The fat makes even more inflammation. It disrupts your hormones. With men, it turns testosterone to estrogen. With women, they'll make more estrogen. They'll get more PMS, depression, uh, postpartum depression, uh, anxiety, irritability, insomnia, fibroid cysts. You know, all of these, it plays a big role. And people notice a huge difference once they go organic. And I don't think people realize um, uh, how crucial cut, gut balance is and everyone's wondering where fibromyalgia comes from. Where does MS come from? When, where does uh, lupus, where do all the autoimmune diseases come from? Do you feel it comes from leaks in the barrier wall leaking out into the bloodstream going on an attack on one of the glands and organs? 
It's multifactorial. Usually what happens with autoimmune, you have a predisposition. And the way I explain things to my patients is we all have different genes. They're like light switches. You can turn it on or turn it off. So if you have a, de a predisposition for an autoimmune disease, bad eating, leaky gut, your immune system gets kicked up, and then you have some event, whether it's a big stressful event or an infection, the immune system gets kicked up into high gear and it doesn't turn off. So your gut, 80% of the immune system is in the gut. And that's why healing the gut is so important to balancing autoimmune disorders. I treat a lot of autoimmune disorders as well. I, I, from the research I've done in the books I've written, I agree with you 100%. When you talk about genetics, I don't feel, and uh, you can correct me, I don't feel that we are solely determined by our genetics because my mother was fat, my grandma was fat, then I'm going to be fat um, or cancer or heart disease. Do you feel we can circumvent our genetic predispositions by making different and better lifestyle and dietary choices? Absolutely. I only test the genes that you can do something about. Again, they're like light switches. You can turn them on or turn it off. So if you, you, if you look at your genetic makeup as a map, you can take different routes. And when I do panels, I tell people we, we don't like for estrogen metabolism, you, you want to metabolize to the two hydroxy form instead of the four hydroxy form, which is carcinogenic. So eat more broccoli, take I3C dim, uh, detoxify, use methylation. So if you know that you have a gene that turns it that way, you can turn that gene off, turn the other gene on. If you don't methylate, which is an important um, metabolic reaction, we give you an activated folate or SAMe, something with the methyl group. So yes, your lifestyle is what determines almost at least 80% of illness, at least. For those of you who are watching Dr. Mehta, it's very clear that she understands um, body health in a way that uh, you probably haven't been exposed to before. This is the kind of medicine I've been practicing for the last 20 years. I am enjoying aging as a result. I don't feel that I'm, uh, my aging is accelerated. Uh, my weight is, is good. My libido is good. I sleep eight hours. This is what you can expect going to a doctor like Dr. Mehta. Is there anything that you would like to say in closing to those people watching who um, are confused about why they feel so bad? Well, I just want people to know that there's help and there's hope. Your lifestyle determines how you're going to live. We're all going to age. It's how we're going to age. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about how we age. It's how the quality of our lives. And we can improve them dramatically. And it doesn't have to be drastic changes. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much. I, I hope um, many, many people see this and get turned on by the information that you just shared with me. I love talking to you. <laughs> I love talking to you too. Thank you for getting the message out, Suzanne. I really Thank appreciate you. it. And so do my patients. Thank you for doing this. And if you need any proof at all, those of you who are watching, look at the doctor's skin, this beautiful skin. skin. No makeup, no makeup. Look at the beautiful skin, clear eyes. That's called health. And um, she exudes it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.